Today we have a great story. It's called The Emperor's New Clothes. This is an important story for all children. I remember learning it when I was about your age because it, ta it teaches us about thinking and not just listening to what everybody says, okay? Okay, so here's our story. Once there was an emperor who was very vain. The only thing he cared about was his wardrobe, a beautiful clothes. All day long, the emperor tried on handsome new outfits and admired his reflection in the mirror. Weavers from his kingdom eagerly waited in line to show their finest cloth to the emperor. They knew he would pay them well for suits made from their fabrics. Look at him. Oh, aren't I wonderful? Look at my beautiful clothes. Mm. Two tricksters from a neighboring kingdom heard about the vain emperor and hurried to the palace. The two had a plan. They would fool the emperor out of his gold and be rich for the rest of their lives. Oh, there they are. Ooh. At a meeting with the emperor, one trickster claimed, Oh, we make the finest fabric in the land. In fact, our fabric is unbelievably wonderful. You could even say it's magical, since it can only be seen by the very wise. The emperor was excited. Soon he would have the most wonderful clothes in the land, and he would know which of his subjects were wise and which ones were foolish. I must have a suit of this extraordinary fabric made for me at once, exclaimed the emperor. He paid the two men in gold to begin their weaving. The trickster set up looms in their royal weaving room. Then they pushed the shuttles hard for hours on end. The work made them sweat and frown, but they did not but they did not lace one bit of silk thread through the looms. The, the two only pretended to be making beautiful new fabrics. Mm -mm -mm. Meanwhile, the emperor could think of nothing but the splendid new cloth. He was eager to visit the weaving room, yet he worried about the cloth's magical power. Oh, what if I'm not wise enough to see it, he wondered. The emperor decided to send his wisest minister and said, Come back to me with a full report, the emperor instructed. When the tricksters pretended to hold up the new cloth, the minister's heart skipped a beat. Oh my, they thought I don't see anything. But the minister did not want the emperor to know that he was not wise. Hmm. I will see to it that you get even more gold for the wonderful work you have done, said the minister. And I will advise the emperor to come and see the fabric for himself. Mm -hmm. The emperor heard the minister's report and was delighted. He went straight to the weaving room with his most trusted courtiers. Again, the tricksters were pushing their shuttles back and forth across the looms. When the courtiers saw this, each one was taken by surprise. Not one of them could see any claw, for there was none to be seen. Aren't the colors and patterns beautiful? asked the minister who had, seen, who had been there before. Oh, indeed. Indeed, remarked the courtiers, and they all nervously agreed that this fabric was most exquisite. Now was the emperor's turn to be worried. I see no cloth at all, not even a single thread, he thought to himself. But it seems like everyone else in my kingdom sees him too. Could it be that I'm a simpleton? that I am unfit to be emperor? <gasps> At that moment, one of the tr tricksters suggested the emperor might take a closer look. Oh, your highness, we have yet 
to hear if you like our handiwork. The emperor knew better than to admit he saw nothing. Instead, he proclaimed that he would wear a suit made from the fantastic cloth in the next royal procession. Begin the sewing at once, he commanded. Mm -mm -mm. That night, as many candles burned, the trickster snipped and snow sewed, pretending to make a new suit. One trickster used his huge scissors to cut imaginary pieces of fabric in the emperor's size. The other carefully sewed the invisible pieces together. Of course, there was no thread in the needle that he used. When morning came, the tricksters announced that the suit of clothes was While one trickster pretended to fasten a pa the pants on the ember, the other asked the ember to stand still. I do not want to stick you with my needle, he warned as he pretended to sew one last button on the invisible cape. You know, the emperor remarked nervously, this fabric feels lighter than air. Oh, indeed. It is so light it feels as if you have nothing on at all, replied one of the tricksters. This, of course, is the beauty of our fine cloth. Feeling much better, the emperor took one more look in the mirror. It truly is my finest suit ever, he said. The emperor paid the two tricksters their last purse full of gold coins. Then he announced that it was time for the royal procession to begin. Now that the tricksters had their fortune, there was no reason for them to stay at the palace any longer. They packed up their gold. Then they made their way down the back roads of the kingdom, never to be seen again. Soon the townsfolk began to gather for the royal procession. They had heard about the emperor's new clothes, and they pushed and shoved one another to get the very best view. Each one was eager to find out who among them was wise and who was not. At last the trumpet sounded. As the emperor marched through the street, the townspeople were shocked. Never before had they seen their emperor clad only in his underwear. But each one wanted to be a pair wise, so they began talking loudly to one another about the emperor's clothes. Oh, look at those beautiful pants he's wearing. Isn't that an enchanting cape? Did you ever see such a fine jacket? They called. The success of his new suit made the emperor feel very proud. He waved to the crowd and walked a bit more slowly, hoping to hear even more. That is, until a little girl called out, Look! The emperor has no clothes on! He's walking through town without a shirt or a cape! He isn't even wearing trousers! The child is right, whispered a few in the crowd. Soon word spread, and the truth was out. The town folks began laughing and agreeing with the little girl. The emperor has no clothes, they shouted. The emperor has no clothes! <laughs> oh. The emperor knew at once that his subjects were telling the truth. Unfortunately for the emperor, he was ruled more by vanity and pride than common sense. So he insisted on marching in his underwear until his royal procession was finally done. Then the emperor hurried toward the palace. He hoped his subjects would soon forget how foolish he had been. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea to pretend that you know something when you don't? People do that all the time. You ask them a question, and instead of saying, I'm sorry, I don't know, they pretend they do. You know what? They think that nobody knows that they didn't know something. But everybody does and know what they think. Oh, how foolish is that person? Or they tell somebody something and the person goes to do it, and then there's a big mess. 
this emperor, what did he want? He wanted everybody to think he was special. And that he didn't want them to know that he didn't know everything he knew. He didn't want them to know that he didn't have all the right answers. You know what? That's very foolish. There are many things we don't know. And that's why we come to school, right? <laughs> to learn. And we keep learning every day. Oh, I read every day so that I learn the things. And if I don't know something, I will ask. If somebody asks me something that I don't know, I won't pretend I do and just make something up. That's foolish. I say, you know, I don't know that. I'll have to go find out. That's what we do. We shouldn't pretend that we have all the answers or get angry when, when people say, you don't know that. You're not very smart. Or you don't. No, just say, I don't know that one. If if Miss Susan or Miss Lily asked you a question and you don't know the answer, you, you don't just sit there. What should you say? I'm sorry. I don't know. That's easy, right? Just say, I don't know. Do you go like this? No, that's not good manners either. Because God gave you a mouth. We talk with our mouth. We don't talk with our shoulders, right? That makes you look foolish, right? So you just say, I'm sorry, I don't know that. And then what? Then you learn. Miss Susan and Miss Lily ask you a lot of questions because they want to see, do you understand? If they don't know that you don't understand, can they help you learn? No, no. So if you don't understand, you say, Miss Susan, I don't understand. Could you take say that again? Miss Lily, I don't understand. Could you tell me that again? And then we will help because we want you to understand. Because everybody thinks differently, right? But we should never be too proud. Too proud to say, I don't know. And that's why this story is so important. When we pretend we don't know something, we show how foolish we are.